Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we get to play around with some new RepotMe products that I just received and I have to say these guys have been in the mail for the past two months or two months and a half. I thought we completely lost the package so actually this video was supposed to be up on YouTube two months ago but hey, better late than never because we get to do a giveaway as well today. Woohoo! So stay tuned for that. Before that though, I will go through all of these products that RepotMe kindly sent me to try out and use in my videos and see what inventive ways I can find for them. And we will actually work with one of them, this really, really beautiful pot right here, because I happen to really, really like these pots and I did find the perfect orchid that goes hand in hand with them, at least here in my climate. So first and foremost, I will actually start with the ceramic pots because I find them really, really pretty. All right, so those of you who are not new on my channel will recognize these glazed pots. I did make a separate video on them and I will link you to that video down below because I talk about another thing which I will reference today. And here's a little update. I absolutely love how my orchids are doing and how they look like in these beautiful glazed pots. I personally like to pot vendacious type orchids, but not only, this is a sideria hybrid actually, and the flower spikes are pendant. So being that this is a taller pot, it will actually make for quite a nice display when I have this orchid in bloom. But for the main part, I do like to pot vendacious orchids in these pots simply because they do enjoy tremendous amounts of air around their root system, more so than other orchids. They also are very drought tolerant and I thought, well, these pots have a lot of ventilation holes. Maybe they will actually dry out a little bit faster, which, you know, not the end of the world with Vandas. But to my surprise, I actually was very comfortable watering these orchids. They didn't actually dry out way too fast, which is a major issue in my climate. So for me, Vandas or Vanda hybrids, such as Neo Phoenicia hybrids as well, they do absolutely fantastic in this type of setup. Now, this doesn't mean that other orchids will not do great in these pots. It just really has to do with environment. I know for a fact that I will have issues growing on cidium types and something like this because they will dry out way, way, way too fast in my super hot climate. But in climates which are rather cool or maybe humid, the extra ventilation holes can actually be a lifesaver for any type of orchid. And I think that's the beauty with these pots is that you can have a beautiful glazed pot with a nice design on it and still have that aeration that many orchids actually really require. I find them to be quite versatile in many environments and in my very warm environment, I will show you how I go about potting orchids in them. I think they're super, super suited for orchids which really are drought tolerant, such as vendacious orchids, even cattleyas. The reason why I didn't pot cattleyas in these particular ones is that they're rather tall, as you can see, and not very wide, which is not super suitable for sympodial orchids with longer rhizomes, such as cattleyas. But they're very suitable for monopodials, which are very drought tolerant. And guess who's on the list? The Vanda. So I have to say I really, really love how my orchids are looking like and I can't wait to see them in bloom, which I think will happen in spring because these are Neo Phoenicia hybrids. However, though, the new pots that RepotMe sent me are a little bit different. So let's look at those. All right, so as you can see, these pots are quite a lot different. They're not as tall and slender as the previous ones. And I believe they are actually more suitable for sympodial orchids. I actually have a Dendrochilum magnum in one of these pots. It's a totally different design, but it's not very tall. And he is a big boy. I'm not gonna bring him to the table because he does not fit in the frame, but you will see images on the screen with him on his shelf. He is doing really, really great in one of these pots as well. So you can see that both my Vendacious Orchids and this guy, which is also an Epiphytic Orchid, are actually suitable for these types of pots. And actually today we are going to play with this guy, which is such a beautiful shade of blue. This is a five inch midnight blue pinwheel fluted orchid pot. The big guy here is the six inch cream over lavender floral cutout orchid pot. So quite different, but beautiful nonetheless. And I'm still debating if I will put a Sideria in this pot or a Renoncera. I'm gonna think about it by the end of this video. Next up, we have these slotted pots, which are a staple, I think, for RepotMe. Everybody really loves these pots, but their new line is actually an eight inch pot. It is 
huge you guys so up until now the biggest pot you could find was the six inch one and this could house a bigger cat layout or a bigger orchid but what do we do about the cymbidiums even the dendrochilums especially the magnum that i just showed you which can get super large and let's say you don't really want to use glazed pots you want to use a transparent or a plastic pot well here is where this big boy comes into play and i have to say they are impressive if you guys know, I do have some Cattleyas which are potted in the 6 inch ones which already are outgrowing these pots since I do want to grow myself some really nice Cattleya specimens. These are perfect. One thing that I really really love about these pots is the fact that they're not super super tall. When you're dealing with big orchids and you're looking for a bigger pot, usually on the market you find pots that are big all around, if that makes sense. Not only are they wide, which is what you need, but they're also tall, which is not necessarily what you need for orchids and especially cattleyas. And finding a pot which is not tall but rather wide can be a little bit difficult, especially if you want it to have an air cone or ventilation slits or things of the sorts. So this is where I think these pots are very different than other pots. And in the end, it's not that you need more medium to retain water, it's just that you need more real estate in the pot. So I think this is the forte of these pots, obviously, with the benefits of the older slotted pots as well. They're very durable, I have to say, and I have Cattleyas potted in these pots outside in the sun for one year and a half or two at this point. They're going strong. The plastic is not brittle, it's still flexible. So they are very durable, they're airy, they have the air cone, they're really, really nice. And now they're huge as well. So that's fantastic. I will definitely find good use for these with my little Cattleyas, which I like to call my little monsters, but hey, I love them. And lastly, this is definitely something new for me. Here we have transparent succulent pots. And you know what? I am going to make a totally separate video on these guys on my second channel, which if you guys don't know, yeah, I do have a second channel where I talk about all sorts of other houseplants. I'll link you to it down below. It's Miss Wicked Girl Houseplants. Easy to find if you search it yourselves as well. So I do have a neat little project for these guys, which I will upload on my second channel. Check it out down below if you're interested in that. But yeah, there we go. Again, the thing that I feel is kind of lacking on the market. Pots which are not super tall, but they're wide. Say you have a rosette type of succulent. You don't really need height, you need width in the pot. And especially with succulents, which some of you I'm sure know more about than me, it's really easy to rot their root system if your pot retains way too much water for way too long. So something like this, I feel, is quite suitable if you like the aesthetic. As I was saying, I do have a neat little project, which I think will look great display-wise as well, which I will upload hopefully this week on my second channel. But today I want to work with this pot and I think I will make it the Sideria home, not the Renacera because this girl is a little bit too big. And I know I will have some watering issues with it at some point. So this is a Sideria which has been sitting in a temporary setup and PS, I do talk about temporary setups more in a different video which I will link you to down below. It's actually a video which talks about these glazed pots. It is important with orchids that you buy or receive bare rooted to put them through a sort of temporary setup that is easy to access, not something like this which you want to hold for two, three, four years if you can, because a temporary setup will not damage the roots once you remove the orchid out of there in order to remove the roots that didn't make it, didn't make the transition, I mean. Anyway, more about it in the description. I do like to put my bare rooted orchids through a temporary setup just to eliminate the roots which will not adapt anyway. But if you can see my orchid, even though I can make it fit here, it's too much of a snug fit. As much as I really wanted my Renathera to have a beautiful pot, I think this is not the pot for it. I'll go for a different pot and today I will place my beautiful Sideria japonica here which will make a much much better fit. So the first thing that I like to do with these types of pots is add a layer of sphagnum moss on the bottom and through the drainage hole. This will not clog up the pot, the water will still drain. However, what it will do is serve as a wick 
And again, this has to do with environment. My environment being very, very prone to evaporation, I do like to leave a little bit of water in the tray for this sphagnum moss to absorb and distribute it evenly to the entirety of the medium. And in this way, I can actually get away with not watering my orchid five days. Wow, amazing, huh? Yeah, that's how my environment works. So I'm going to prepare my usual type of mixture, which is a bark and sphagnum moss mix. And as I'm potting my orchid, let's talk a little bit about pot size, which is always a little bit of a subject of debate. After all of these years of growing orchids, I kind of reached to the conclusion that pot size really doesn't matter. It is actually a beginner advice and for beginners, it is pretty good because it's better to be safe than sorry. But once you have experience and you do have quite a grasp on your environment and how your orchids react in your environment and how different orchids behave, then this rule actually simply doesn't make sense. And furthermore, it actually harms your hobby and your enjoyment. The time it takes for a pot to dry out depends on many, many things, starting from environment to the orchid and the quantity of the roots of the orchid, and also how fast it grows, but also with the type of pot you're using. And you can see that I have a pot which has quite a lot of ventilation. Obviously, this pot with this size will dry out faster than the very same pot, very same size, but without ventilation holes. So knowing this actually affects my personal decision when it comes to pot size. I typically go for larger sizes, especially with ventilated pots, because I know if I don't, I'm going to have a really, really, really bad time keeping these orchids hydrated. Now, this will definitely not apply in other environments, with other types of orchids, with other types of pots. In the end, you have to make a personal choice for yourself. You have to really ask yourself, how do you feel more comfortable? What is your level of experience at this moment? Because right now you might actually go for something, but two years from now you will go for something else. You continuously grow in this hobby and there's really nothing wrong with that. And your decisions really should be based on how things work in your environment, not on what people say on the internet. So what I'm showing you today is one way of using these pots. It's the way that works great for me, which suffers from a super high evaporation rate. Obviously, if you don't have the same evaporation rate as me, you can totally skip the whole sphagnum moss at the bottom and wick situation. You probably don't need it. You could get away only with bark in some environments. And when you water, in some environments, you should definitely tilt the pot and remove all of the water in the tray. I don't need to do that. But honestly, you will not know how your environment works until you try out a few things and see the outcome that you have. And afterwards, you'll see things come easy and your environment and your orchid will actually communicate with you and will tell you what is the best thing to do. And here we are, my orchids are now potted. This little girl will go back outside because, oh boy, we're having a heat wave in October. Isn't that fun? But before we end this video, I told you about a giveaway. So yeah, it is time to make a little giveaway. We're actually, RayPodMe is making the giveaway. They're giving out 10 of these ceramic pots, five inch or six inch, your choice, to 10 lucky winners in the USA. However, you might know that currently they're not shipping internationally anymore. And given that I almost lost this package, I can see how postal services are not fully functional due to the situation in the world. We decided it would be nice to give away actually merch from my merch store. So five of you, which I will randomly choose, will get to pick three items from my merch store, whichever ones you like best, and they will be shipped through Teespring. So to enter the giveaway, all you need to do is leave a comment down below saying I'm in and then tell me if you are in for the USA giveaway or the international giveaway. You don't need to give me any other details. Just say I'm in for the USA or I'm in for international. And in a week, I will announce the 15 lucky winners. And I really hope you will enjoy testing out these products or if you wanted something from the merch store, but maybe you couldn't really buy it at this time. I hope you will enjoy it. And hopefully in the future, we can do more international stuff. Again, RepodMe is hoping to actually become available 
in EU soon, but this year, you guys know, everything was very, very hard for everybody and there were much more important things to take care of. So for now, I really do hope you will enjoy this giveaway and I hope you've enjoyed today's video. As for Repotme, they're my long-term collaborators. I really enjoy working with them and you guys tell me a lot of good things about their products and their customer service. So that reinforces my decision to partner up with them. They're the only partners that I have at the moment for the past two years and a half at this point. So all I can say is thank you so much for sponsoring me and sponsoring this giveaway. Even if it's merch, they're still sponsoring that as well. So yeah, good luck to all of you. Thank you so much for watching this video. You'll have links to these products down below in the description, of course. And with that said, I hope you have a great day. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates, and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.